All right, we are going to, yeah, Ava, we're starting. Let's go. All right. We are going to finish the book today. Once we finish the book, do not get off because I have directions about what you're going to do for the, like the end of book projects, okay, which are not too challenging, so don't panic. So do not hop off when we finish, okay? And I want to have tiny discussions. But we are going to finish the book. Oh, I just closed my book. We are on chapter 43, which is called Our Gooseberry. So remember, Sal officially has found out oh, that her mother cannot come home. The police officer has her in it has her in his car and she said okay you know you can just take me to jail now she had her gotta do what you gotta do moment she didn't care about the consequences she took her grandpa's car she had to go to the bus wreck and she just did what she had to do we we're on 34 hour gooseberry instead of taking me to jail the sheriff drove me to cordialine with the deputy following us in graham's car the sheriff gave me a lengthy and severe lecture about driving without a license and he made me promise that I would not drive again until I was 16. Not even on Gramps' farm, I said. He looked straight ahead at the road. I suppose people are going to do what they want to do on their own farms, he said. As long as they have a lot of room to maneuver and as long as they are not endangering the lives of any other persons or animals. But I'm not saying you ought to. I'm not giving you permission or anything. So the guy's like, you know, she's like, what, I can't even drive on, on the farm? Like, we own that property. And he's like, okay, lady, like, Sal, listen. Yeah, you can do that on your own farm. But I'm not telling you you can just, just you know. He's trying to just get his life. He's just like, what is with this girl doing? I asked him to tell me about the bus accident. When I asked him if he'd been there that night and asked if he'd seen anyone brought out of the bus, he said, you don't want to know all that. A person shouldn't have to think about those things. Did you see my mother? I saw a lot of people, Sal, Monica, and maybe I saw your mother and maybe I didn't. But I'm sorry to say that if I did see her, I didn't know it. I remember your father coming in to the station. I do remember that, but I wasn't with him when I, when I wasn't there when. Did you see Mrs. Cadaver? I said, how do you know about Mrs. Cadaver? He said, of course I saw Mrs. Cadaver. Everyone saw Mrs. This is good never. Nine hours after the bus rolled over, all those stretchers were being carried up the hill and everyone disappearing, disparing. And there, her hand coming up out of the window and everyone was shouting because there it was, a moving hand. He glanced at me. I wish it had been your mother's hand. Mrs. Cadaver was sitting next to my mother, I said. Oh, so can someone just tell me who was the last or who was the only surviving person on the bus? Michaela. Mrs. Cadaver. It was Mrs. Cadaver. So every single person on that bus passed away besides Mrs. Cadaver. So that is the connection between, or that's how we met Mrs. Cadaver, how Sal's dad met Mrs. Cadaver. They were strangers to each other when they got on the bus. But by that time they got off, six days later, they were friends. My mother told Mrs. Cadaver all about me and my father on our farm in Bybanks. She told Mrs. Cadaver about the fields and the blackberries and Moody Blue and the chickens and the singing trees. I think that if she told Mrs. Cadaver all that, then my mother must have been missing us, don't you think? I'm sure of it, the sheriff said. And how do you know all this? So I explained to him how Mrs. Cadaver had told me all this on the day Phoebe's mother returned. Mrs. Cadaver told me about how my father visited her in the hospital in Lewiston after he had buried my mother. He came to see the only survivor from the, brush cr the bus crash, and when he learned that Mrs. Cadaver had been sitting next to my mother, they started talking to each other. They talked for six hours. So what happened was Sal's dad had to find the person who was the only person who survived the bus crash. He found her. Mrs. Cadaver was in the hospital. And coincidentally, Mrs. Cadaver had also been sitting next to Sal's mother. Mrs. Cadaver told me about her and my father writing to each other and about how my father needed to get away from Barbanks for a while. He asked Mrs. Cadaver, 
I asked Mrs. Cadaver why my father hadn't told me how he met her, and she said he had tried, but I didn't want to hear it, and he didn't want to upset me. He thought I might dislike Mrs. Cadaver because she survived and my mother had not. Do you love him? I asked Mrs. Cadaver. Are you going to marry him? Goodness, she said. It's a little early for that. He's holding on to me because I was with your mother and held her hand in her last moments. Your father isn't ready to love anyone else yet. Your mother was one of a kind. That's true. She was. And even though Mrs. Cadaver had told me all this and had told me how she had been with my mother, I still did not believe that my mother was actually dead. I still thought that there might have been a mistake. I don't know what I had hoped for, what I had hoped to find in Louis Stim. Maybe I expected that I would see her walking through a field and I would call her and she would say, Oh, Salamonica, my left arm. Oh, Salamonica, take me home. I slept for the last 50 miles into Cordelian and when I awoke, I was sitting in the sheriff's car outside the hospital entrance. The sheriff was coming out of the hospital. He handed me an envelope and slid in beside me on the seat. In the envelope was a note from Gramps, giving me the name of the motel he was staying at it. Beneath that, he had written, I'm so sorry to say that our gooseberry died at three o'clock this morning. So Sal had to leave. She had to do what she had to do. She had to see that best accident by her mother's birthday. But while she was gone, Gramps did pass away. So she could not recover from her stroke. Which can happen. People do die from strokes. Some people are able to recover from strokes. Some people are not. But Gooseberry slash Graham had officially passed away. Gramps was sitting on the side of the bed in the motel talking on the phone. When he saw me and the sheriff at the door, he put the phone down and hugged me to him. The sheriff told Gramps how sorry he was and that he didn't think it was a time or place to give anybody a lecture about endangering granddaughters, drive about underage granddaughters driving down a mountainside in the middle of the night. He handed Gramps his car keys and asked if Gramps needed help making any arrangements. Gramps said he had taken care of most things. Gramps' body was being flown back to Bybanks, where my father would meet the plane. Gramps and I were going to finish what had to be done in Cordialine and leave the next morning. After the sheriff and his deputy left, I noticed that Gramps and Gramps' suitcase, I noticed Graham and Gramps' suit, open suitcase Inside were Gramps' things, all mixed in with Gramps' clothes. I picked up her baby powder and smelled it. On the desk was a crumpled letter. When Gramps saw me and looked at it, he said, I wrote her a letter last night. It's a love letter. Remember, Gramps said that he had never written her a love letter. What the heck? Why didn't you ever write me a love letter? Gramps lay down on the bed and stared up at the ceiling. Chicka bitty, he said, I miss my gooseberry. He put one arm over his eyes. His other hand patted the empty space beside him. This ain't, he said. This ain't. It's okay, I said. I sat down on the other side of the bed and held his hand. This ain't your marriage bed. About five minutes later, Gramps cleared his throat and said, but it will have to do. Chapter 44, Bybanks. We're back in Bybanks now. My father and I are living on our farm again, and Gramps is living with us. Graham is buried in the Aspen Grove where she and Gramps were married. We miss our gooseberry every single day. Lately, I've been wondering if there might be something hidden behind the fireplace because just as the fireplace was behind just as the fireplace was behind the plaster wall and my mother's story was behind Phoebe's, I think there's a third story behind Phoebe's and my mother's, and that was Graham and Gramps. On the day after Graham was buried, her friend Gloria, the one Graham thought was so much like Phoebe, and the one who had a hankering for Gramps, came to visit Gramps. They sat on our porch while Gramps talked about Graham for four hours straight. Gloria said, if Gloria asked if we had any aspirin, she had a grand headache. We haven't seen her since. Uh -huh. So Gloria has always loved Graham, but she came over after his wife had passed away and they talked to them. She was like, yeah, probably not. I wrote to Tom Fleet, the boy who had helped Graham with the snake when the snake took a snack out of her leg. I told him that Graham made it back to Bybanks, but unfortunately she came in a coffin. 
I decided I described the Aspen Grove where she was buried and told him about the river nearby. He wrote back saying that he was sorry about Grams and maybe he would come and visit the Aspen Grove someday. Then he asked, is your riverbank private property? Haha, <laughs> because remember, he had said the river was private property, even though it really wasn't. Funny. Gramps is giving me more driving lessons in the pickup truck. We practice over on Gramps' old farm where the new owners let us conk around on the dirt roads. With us rides Gramps' new beagle puppy, which he named Huzzah, Huzzah. Gramps pets the puppy and smokes his pipe, then I drive, and we both play the moccasin game. It's a game we made up on our way back from Idaho. We take turns pretending we are walking in someone else's moccasins. If I were walking in Phoebe's moccasins, I would be jealous of a new brother dropping out of the sky. If I were in Graham's moccasins right this minute, I would want to cool my feet in that river over there. If I were walking in Ben's moccasins, I would miss Salamonica Hill. On and on we go. We walk in everybody's moccasins, and we have discovered some interesting things this way. One day, I realized that our whole trip out to Lewinston had been a gift from Graham and Gramps to me. They were giving me a chance to walk in my mother's moccasins to see, to see what she had seen and feel what she might have felt on her last trip. I also realized that there were a lot of reasons why my father didn't take me to Idaho when he had gotten the news of her death. He was too grief-stricken, and he was trying to spare me. Only later did he understand that I had to go and see for myself. He was right about one thing, though. We didn't need to bring her body back because she is in the trees, the barns, the fields. Gramps is different. He needs Gramps right here. He needs to walk out to the Aspen Grove to see his goose fairy. One afternoon, after we had been talking about Prometheus stealing fire from the sun to give to man, and about Pandora opening up the forbidden box with all the evils in the world, Gramps said that those myths evolved because people needed a way to explain where fire came from and why there was evil in the world. That made me think of Phoebe and the lunatic, and I said, if I were walking in Phoebe's moccasins, I would have believed in a lunatic and an axe-wielding Mrs. Cadaver to explain my mother's disappearance. Phoebe and her family helped me, I think. They helped me to think about and understand my own mother. Phoebe's tales were like me, like mine fishing in the air. For a while, I needed to believe that my mother was not dead and that she would come back. I still fish in the air sometimes. It seems to me that we can't explain all the truly awful things in the world, like war and mor murder and brain tumors, and we can't fix these things. So we look at frightening things that are closer to us, and we magnify them until they burst open. Inside is something we can manage, something that isn't as awful as it had seemed at first. It is relief to discover that although there might be axe murderers and kidnappers in the world, most people seem a lot like us, sometimes afraid and sometimes brave, sometimes cruel and sometimes kind. I decided that bravery is looking at Pandora's box full in the eyes as best you can and then turning to the other box. The one with the smooth, beautiful folds inside. Mama kissing trees. My grandma saying huzzah, huzzah. Gramps and his marriage bed. My mother's postcards and her hair are still beneath the hardwood floors in my bedroom. I reread all the postcards when I came home. Graham and Gramps and I had been in every place my mother had. There are the Black Hills, Mount Rushmore, the Badlands. The only postcard that is still hard for me to read is the one from Cordialine. And one, the one I received two days after she died. So remember, mail isn't instantaneous. So her mother had sent this postcard. Uh, then the bus accident happened. Uh, then after she would found out her mother died is when she got the postcard. So she still received mail as if her mother was alive, but she had already passed away. When I drive Gramps around the truck, around in his truck, I also tell him all the stories my mother told me. His favorite is Navajo, one about Estelathina. Estelathina. However we say that word, Mrs. Knife will come back to you on that one. She's a woman who never dies. She grows from baby to mother to old woman and then turns into a baby again. And on and on she goes, living a thousand, thousand lives. Gramps likes this, and so do I. Now, you might be thinking, why would they like that story? Remember, they are Native American. Sal is. Um, so they there's definitely a lot of tales that surround Native American culture. And, you know, they've had to experience a lot of death in their life. So hearing about someone that lives thousands and thousands of lives is probably a little bit comforting, even they know, even though they know that's not possible. 
I still climb the sugar maple tree and I have heard the singing tree saying the sugar maple tree is my thinking place. Yesterday in the sugar maple, I realized that I was jealous of three things. The first jealousy is a foolish one. I'm jealous to whoever Ben wrote about in his journal because it was not me. Remember, Ben wrote his journal before he ever met Sal. The second jealousy is this. I am jealous that my mother had wanted more children. Wasn't I enough? When I walk in her moccasins, though, I say, if I were my mother, I might want more children, not because I don't love my Salamonica, but because I love her so much, I want more of these. Maybe that fish in the air, maybe that is a fish in the air, and maybe it isn't, but it is what I want to believe. The last jealousy is not foolish, nor is it one that will go away just yet. I am still jealous that Phoebe's mother came back and mine did not. I miss my mother. Ben and Phoebe write to me all the time. Ben sent me a valentine in the middle of October that said, roses are red, dirt is brown. Please be my valentine or else I'll frown. Okay, so silly. First off, valentine in October and dirt is brown. Come on, hilarious. There was a PS added. I've never written poetry before. I sent a valentine back that said, Dry is the desert, wet is the rain. Your love for me is not in vain. I added a, I added a PS that said, I've never written poetry either. Ben and Phoebe and Mrs. Cadaver and Mrs. Partridge are all coming to visit next month. That's exciting news because I don't know about you, but when we started this chapter and they were back in Bybanks, it's the first thing I thought of. Like, they came back to Bybanks, which is fabulous, so they're back on their farm, but... What about everyone they left behind? They had made new friends, Sal and Phoebe, or not Sal, but Phoebe and Ben and then Mrs. Cadaver and Mrs. Partridge. You know, we can't leave Mrs. Partridge alone. There is a chance that Mr. Berkway might come as well, but Phoebe hopes not, as she does not think she can stand to be in a car for that long with a teacher. My father and I have been scrubbing at the house for this, their visit. I can't wait to show Phoebe and Ben the swimming hole and the fields and the hayloft and the trees and the cows and the chickens. Blackberry, the chicken that Ben gave me, is queen of the coop. And I'll show Ben her too. I am hoping also for some blackberry kisses. But for now, Gramps has his beagle. And I have a chicken and the singing tree. And that's the way it is. Huzzah, huzzah. The end. We have been working on this book for so long. I hope you guys have enjoyed this or did enjoy it as much as I did. I literally am obsessed. I think this book makes me happy, even though there's so many sad parts. I think this book has some of the best cliffhangers ever. I think there's a lot of mystery. And I hope you guys really understood the story within this. It is a sad book, Olivia, but it turns out so good too. There's lots of sadness, but there's also lots of happiness. I th really hope you guys understood that um the story within the story you know she was telling the story of phoebe but while telling the story of phoebe she realized things about her own story with her mother lucky for phoebe her mother was able to come back and sal's mother wasn't but i think sal really had to do what she had to do and then was able to you know find closure sometimes when people pass away it's hard to accept it and sal had to find closure and she couldn't do that without going to the bus accident site so I hope you guys love this book. And like I said, don't leave because we have a few other things we have to talk about. I have to share my screen. So don't leave, but I got to get my screen sharing. So one thing, once we get off, which is not yet, so don't leave me. One thing you obviously have to do is take the AR quiz over this book. And do not take the, well, you will have time today, but do not take the AR quiz if you are in a rush, okay? Okay. Um, make sure you have a good amount of time to take the AR quiz. If you rush through it, you might get some wrong answers. We have worked so hard on this book. We have learned so much. I truly believe that everyone should be able to do their personal best and get a good score. So please do not rush through the quiz. Make sure you're reading all the questions carefully. Make sure you take this book, you know, by Sharon Creech, Walk to Moon. So that is something you have to do once we get off. Don't get off yet because I'm not done yet. I would like that done by tomorrow, okay? So that's by tomorrow, taking the AR quiz. And then, you know, some of you guys will get those last AR points you need. The other things you're going to do as soon as my screen shares, I will tell you about.
we have two last things um, for the end of um, book project. I was trying to think, how could we end this on like a positive note? But I think you guys have also had some really good opportunities to share some things like about yourselves. So I have two things that we're going to do for our end of project books, but they are not due until Thursday. So tomorrow you have to, by tomorrow, you have to take the IAR quiz. By Thursday, you have to finish the two things I'm about to share with you. If my screen ever shares, sorry. It's moving slow this morning. It was moving slow when I was working earlier this morning too. Is my screen sharing? Nod your head, yes, if it's sharing. Yes, okay, cool. So underneath May 17th through 21st, there will be two things appearing. One is mini book review. This is Kanaipal loves mini book reviews. I know if you've been in my reading RTI in the past, you've done a mini book review with me before, except it was about like any book you read. You're going to be doing your mini book review about Walk Two Moons, obviously, because that's just what we read. And I like, um, I love doing the book review because I like to know your honest opinion about the book and I'm going to be the ones reading it. So you don't have to like, if you didn't really love the book, that's probably okay. Well, I mean, I hope you love the book, but if you didn't love the book, um, no one else is going to be reading this. So you can tell me your honest thoughts on our mini book review. So mini book review is being assigned now. It is officially open. Let's go through it really quick. On the mini book review, obviously it's over Walk Two Moons. So you have to type that. Title, Walk Two Moons. Author, who's the author? Sharon Creech. Uh, then you have to rate the book on a scale of one to 10. One, hated the book. 10, Love the book. Just highlight whichever number. I want to know how you felt about this book. Uh, then I have a few questions for you to answer. And I want the most honest opinion possible because I want to know how you felt about it. You know, maybe if a ton of people didn't like it, maybe I'll consider doing a different book next year. But I feel like most of us liked it. But that's my own opinion. So um, you are going to highlight some words that describe the books. Is the book Was the book exciting, boring, scary, heartwarming, confusing? I want you to highlight any words that describe it. Uh, then the first question is list any other words to describe the book. I only listed a few words. Do you have another descriptive word, another adjective to go with this book? If you do, feel free to put them there. Uh, then you have to type me one full paragraph, five to seven sentences, capital letters, punctuation, indent, of a summary of the book just if someone was like i do not have time to read 280 pages give me the gist i want you to give me a good summary please we have written or we have written quite a few summaries this year especially in reading class so i want you to do your personal best on that and then i want to know what is your favorite part of the book i think there are so many good parts of this book i'm excited to see everyone's favorite part and then the last one is who would you recommend this book to and why like, do you think this, like, I want to know if there's a certain person you're thinking of, like your parents, or are you thinking that fourth graders could handle this book too, and sixth graders could handle this book too? So I just want you to tell me, who do you think would also enjoy this book? It can be a certain person, or it can be like a group of people. So that is the mini book review that is due by Thursday at 8 a.m. Are there questions on the mini book review? Any questions on that? Don't get off yet. We still have one more thing to go through. Okay, if there's not questions on that, I'm going to sh share my screen again. And I am, oh wait, Mrs. Kanaipa will totally, okay, sorry, that was my bad. Here's the mini book review that I didn't ever say share this tab instead. So I was pointing at it and didn't actually show it to you. So hopefully you clicked on it. So book title, author, one to 10, highest is amazing, one hated it. Here's where you highlight. We all know how to highlight. Here's where you list your adjectives. If you can think of another great word, here's where you put your paragraph summary, your favorite part of the book, and why you'd recommend this book. So now that you've actually seen the paper, now that I press share my screen, are there any questions on this? Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raising. So now I'm actually going to share my screen again because Mrs. Knifel's not going to mess this up twice. And I'm going to share, um, put out the other thing. This is also due by Thursday at 8 a.m. Okay, so like tomorrow, we're not going to have a live um, reading RTI because you're going to be working on this project, these two projects. So 
it is a Google Classroom question. I want you to be as honest as possible just because I think this is interesting. So Sal had that moment where she like literally had to do what she had to do, right? She had to take her grandfather's keys. She had to see the bus accident. If she didn't see the bus accident, she was never going to get that closure. So that is her had to do what she had to do moment. So regardless of the consequences, she had to do what she had to do. So I want you to think in your own life, has there ever been a moment in your life that you had to do what you had to do? Like, you just had to do something, even if you didn't know what was going to happen in the end, like you were taking a risk, you didn't know what was going to happen, or maybe you were going to get in trouble, you didn't know, but any time in your life, you had to do what you had to do, even if it didn't turn off that great, even if maybe you did get in trouble, I want you to tell me about a time you had to do what you had to do, maybe it was for you to get closure, maybe it was because you just needed that toy so bad, I don't know. Um, it can be from when you were little, or it can be something now. So that one, if I were you, I would think about that one. That one's going to be a little bit harder. Um, if I were you, I'd do the book review first. All right. So before I let you all go, what are our questions? Michaela, your hand is up. Tell me what is your question, ma'am? Michaela, freeze. Michaela, do you have a question or no? Yes, no. Okay, you're not speaking. So I'm going to assume you don't have a question because you're not talking. Does anyone wait? Hold on. Sorry, I see it. How do you write? Michaela, we've talked many times about how we write a summary. A summary is the most important. Okay. Yes, I agree, Jameson. Summaries are the highlighted most important parts of the book. Remember the example I just said a minute ago, Mrs. Kneifel doesn't have to, time to read 280 pages. So give me the gist. You should probably talk about the main characters. You should probably talk about Sal. You should probably talk about Phoebe. You should probably talk about the trip to Idaho. You should probably talk about how that's a story within a story. Those would be the main things. So you need to put them into sentences. Okay. Evan, I don't know. I don't understand your question, sir. Sure, for that, yeah. Um, Evan just asked a good question, and he said um, the got to do what you got to do question. If you know that eventually you're going to have a got to do what you got to do situation, like Evan said, maybe having to put an animal down. That would be a got to do what you got to do situation, even though it's going to hurt your heart. It's going to be what's best for the animal. You could write about something that's going to be a future. Got to do what you got to do. That's a good one, Evan. Hannah Truber, do you have a question? I just saw your hand raise. Or was that an accident? I don't know anything that I've had to do. Well, that's why I said you're going to think about it, okay? If you really, or like I just said, a future situation. So you're going to keep thinking about that. It is not due till Thursday. If by tomorrow you still haven't thought of a got to do what you got to do moment, I could find you an alternative question, okay? But right now, I want you to just keep it keep it festering in your brain. You might think of one unexpectedly. I was trying to think of a good one for you guys to share about myself, but, you know, I don't want to share that moment in my life. So anyways, let's recap really quick. Book. Great. So glad we finally finished it. The first thing, once we get off, so don't leave me yet, the first thing we're going to do is, one, take the AR quiz. You have plenty of time today. We have like 25-ish minutes to get the quiz done. So I want you to do your personal best. Read every answer. Use process of elimination. You guys know how to take a quiz. And then after you take the quiz, go you hopefully you do fabulous and then you may work on either of the projects you may work on the got to do what you got to do moment or you may work on the mini book review okay quiz is due by tomorrow i do not give you way too much i disagree i could give you something so much harder isabella like that makes me salty that you just said that because like I could give you so much more and you have till Thursday. So please don't say that. That's not very polite. Um, anyways, now I have lost my train of thought. I will be collecting books. Um, 
around Thursday because some of you guys might want to keep it for your book review and stuff. So just whenever you're done with it, I can take it back. Okay. So AR quiz, mini book review, Google Classroom question. AR quiz is due by 8 a.m. tomorrow, but really you should do it now because you have time. Mini book review and a Google Classroom question are due by Thursday. Okay. If you do not have questions, you may get off and get started on your stuff. Bye-bye.